I'm now moving on to Colossians chapter 2. And I find this is a very interesting chapter because it begins by saying, and I'm mixing between the NIV and the normal King James, simply because I think some of the wording in the NIV are, uh, is, is clearer and helps you to understand a little bit more because um, in the authorised version, the chapter 2 of Colossians begins, for I would have you know that what great conflict I have for you uh, and for them in Laodicea and for as many as and I've not seen my face. Now, in the NIV, I think it explains it a lot more clearly because it says, I want you to know how much I am struggling for you. In other words, right throughout Colossians, Paul is expressing a great love for the people. But here he's expressing it slightly differently in the fact that so many of the people he was talking to, he knew because he had met them. In many cases, he'd planted and pioneered the churches, but not in every case. And here he's struggling a little bit to express his feeling in writing rather than in person. And he goes on to say, uh, particularly regarding those who haven't seen him personally. But his struggle is explained a little bit more in verse 2, where he says that their hearts may be comforted, being knit together in love. And then he goes on to say, not only encouraged and united in love, but that in this, in this unity in love, that they might have the full riches of complete understanding, that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. So in actual fact, what he's trying to indicate is that it's only when they're in love together and in fellowship together, and I think this is a challenge to churches today, that it's only when they are united in love that they can then receive the full explanation and understanding of who Christ is and what Christ ha can reveal. Because in the NIV it's saying um, that understand and know the ministry of God, namely in Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, this is something very interesting. I've not heard preachers talk in this way myself, in that here Paul is quite clearly explaining that the treasures of God are hidden in Christ. And therefore, only when you understand the person of Christ do you begin to understand fully what the blessings of God are? Because the blessings of God come to us not just from the Father, but through Christ. And this emphasizes the importance of Jesus Christ in the ministry to us. Now, I know that we are taught in the Scripture to pray to God and, and ask God as our Father, but it's quite clear that Jesus himself says, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it. So even in the words of Jesus himself comes this realization 
that it is Christ who has the ability, the right, and I'll show you in a moment how this comes, to pass on the blessings of God, that although God is our Father, we still come in the name of his Son in order to receive the blessing. And here Paul is putting it very, very beautifully in that he's saying that it literally is the unity that we have in fellowship together enables us to see more explicitly the hidden treasures and ministry that's in Christ. Have you got that? In order to fully understand all whom Christ is, we need to have that affinity, that fellowship, and that love one with another. So he continues on because he's saying that in Christ, and I'm now going back to the authorized version in verse, uh, verse um, 3, that in Christ are hidden treasures of wisdom and knowledge and understanding. So it comes back so closely to our relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, he then goes on in verse 4, I say this, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. And in verse 5, what he's saying very clearly is, although I'm absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. <laughs> I know that so often that word's uh, regarding being present in the spirit is twisted out of its context because I've heard some people say, well, I can't be in your meeting in person, but I'll be with you in spirit. But that is not quite what Paul is saying. He says that um, although I'm absent in the flesh, Yet we have such a sense of unity in the Spirit that as we are joined together, I can all, all this is revealed to me about your love and your steadfastness of your faith in Christ. And in verse 6, he goes on to say, As you have therefore received Christ, walk in him.